Hi, this is State of Mind, and if you like what you see, hit the little button right here and subscribe. It's right here. See that? Okay. Uh, today I have on somebody who I've known since the tender age of zero. <laughs> <laughs> and what I want to say about this person is, well, I want to say she's Nancy Lee Grand's daughter, but I'm going to say this instead, because she has become her own person. And it's a beautiful thing to watch when you've known somebody from such a you know, young age to become successful and just see her do what she wants to do. Now, she's still Nancy's daughter. <laughs> we'll always be Nancy's daughter. <laughs> we'll always be Nancy's daughter. Uh, but anyway, uh, her name is, well, I forgot, uh, Kate Ron. Yeah. It's Nancy's daughter. Thank you. I'm legally changing <laughs> my name to off. Nancy's daughter. Yeah. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Uh, it's so good to have you here. Thank you for having me. Um, first, I want to I want to talk about Ragdoll. Sure. You did this this what do we call them albums now? Still call them albums? Uh, you, you, this one, I guess, is an EP because it's six songs, so it's not long enough to be. Oh, album, what's an EP? It's just a short album, basically. Is that what an EP means? Yeah, basically. Darn, I didn't know that. Yeah, because there's an LP, an EP. What, when, did you, when did you decide that you had a voice, not just a real voice, but a voice to, for people to listen to you? And, and you write your songs, right? Yeah, write or co-write. That's a, that's a, that's a real artist. I love that. Thanks. Uh, when, how old were you when you first knew that you, you could do this? Well, when I first started singing, I was really young because I was, my mom always was playing music and musical theater. I grew up on that. And <clears throat> I would actually start, she had, I would sing at her events. I would sing musical oh, theater, right, right. Wicked, but I would just sit there and like sing like this. And gradually I got out of my shell. Um, and then in junior high, I joined a rock band with three other boys and then we would play her events. And it was, that was honestly a good experience for just being on now, stage. Now, were you shy, like, like uh, <clears throat> really shy or just normal shy? I was, I would say normal shy. Okay. You know, like I didn't like necessarily, I don't know if I liked being on the stage at that age. Yeah. But I loved singing and I loved the feeling after too. Ah. So... Um, and I just, and I loved singing. So I was like, well, people want to watch. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. But then later I really, I really started enjoying the actual performance of it. And I'm still like, obviously I'm still like very young and I'm still learning. But ev every time I perform, I just, I take a little bit more of a risk every time. So that's why the experience of that's actually nice. getting on stage and performing is really, and that's why COVID has been obviously difficult in many ways, but it's yeah, been yeah, yeah, hard yeah. for live performances because I feel like, you know, I haven't been able to do that. And that's, I think what I'm best at. Um, so yeah, I definitely miss getting on stage. And, you know, when I was little, I used to think, that if I did something, if I, you know, moved around, I would look silly or stupid. And then I realized when I would watch myself back, I'd be like, oh, you look like, you look silly or not doing right. something. Right, yeah, Like yeah. if you're just sitting there, you know, if you were like running around the stage, it would be even, would, would be less silly than just standing there. Yeah, which... it's like my wife <clears throat> would say to me when I would do, when I would do too much in my mind, she'd say, honey, no, you're not. You're, you, that's actually yeah. very good. You you feel a certain way that it's over the top or yeah. whatever, but it, it really isn't. She goes, you won't do anything that's not truthful inside. Right. So you can go big, but I'd be afraid, like, oh, I'm going to be a bad actor and this and that. Yeah. And, you know. Now, when you were little, when you first started singing, were you good in the beginning or did you grow into being 
good. I think that I had a natural ability to sing, but I definitely, I didn't have the confidence yet. So I don't think that I, you know, gave it my all. Um, and I had, I had like a little kid voice. So I could, you know, I had, well, I used to call vibrato bumpies. So, you know, when you're singing and I, I remember I was in a musical and I saw this girl who's older than me. She was probably in fourth grade, but I thought she was like 17. And, um, she was singing with vibrato and I was like, Oh my God, like, I want to do that. I want to sing with bumps. Yeah. <laughs> I like, so I kind of just watched and I also just listened and learned and, um, but I, but for the most part, like I didn't really have a singing lesson until like college. So, wow. um, or like right before college. So I think for the most part, it was pretty natural. Where'd you get your <clears throat> confidence? Experience. Yeah. Um, like stage experience, but also like life experience. Yeah. Um, and I think, I mean, even just in general, like being a young girl growing yeah. up in especially a private school, you know, there, there are mean girls and then they stunt your confidence. Like I was such a confident little kid. And then you, you, you go into junior high and then it all goes away because you know, girls are mean. And, really? Yeah. But then I learned to, you know, get it back and I performed in school and, you know, honestly, my peers were very supportive. Um, and it, it's actually interesting because you go from, for, I went to school at a small school and you, you go from being a big fish in a small pond into, you know, USC where it's like a very well-known, oh, yeah. prestigious program for music. Yeah. And you go into, and you're like, oh God, like i I'm, I'm nothing like uh -huh. I, and you don't, and you know, you, you're, you don't actually think that you're like, okay, I'm so lucky to be um, working with these amazing uh, musicians, but you have to, you, it humbles you and you are like, okay, everyone's amazing. This is a really hard industry. It's different than being the only singer in your school. So it humbles you, but it also grounds you and, um, you just, you just like got to work hard and, and then that's, well, that's the key to to it all yeah working your ass yeah off. Sorry, and not comparing and not comparing yourself yes you know now i used to tell your mom and 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 i was wrong i used to say ever go to american idol have... and look at i love american yeah. idol and i think it's fantastic <laughs> in the whole thing because i watch it every every week but you're doing it I think the way it, uh, I shouldn't say this because it's gonna sound bad, but like an art, like a real artist, they just do it their way. For me, it wasn't even necessarily which way was right. It was more that my whole identity is based off of what's authentic to me, and I, I just think that going on a, a show like that. I mean, reality TV is not authentic, but also for me, I don't think that you know that road was authentic to me. Yeah. So I didn't, I, for, for the whole EP is about authenticity and about, you know, being real. And I would kind of feel like, you know, a hypocrite if I, if you went against, yeah. And then was uh, yeah. inauthentic you know, I to myself. What you're saying. Yeah. But, yeah. but also like it's a, because the industry is really, really, really hard, just like the act the you know, yes. entertainment industry, acting industry. But, um, it's a, it's a, it's a road I really did think of because, you know, social media is unfortunately a huge part of, know. you know, your brand and marketing and getting fans and, and streams. Yeah. Um, but so a lot of people that go on those shows, you know, they'll get the blue check, they'll get a bunch of followers, but then yeah. I hear that, you know, they got to get pigeonholed into, you know, that reality show. So uh, it's hard for them to kind of break out of it. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about your mom. Okay. You know, I worked with your mom for so long. And when your mom's in a storyline, I always say this to people, when, when Nancy's in a storyline that she's into, she's like phenomenal yeah. actress. Phenomenal. I mean, I... I used to I used to do scenes with her like I don't know what storyline I guess Christina got raped so, you know I watched that story that line. was a cool story I, and I like I don't I, I I love it but I don't always come home and watch the show yeah sure but I um but I remember actually because 
I, like Lexi, I would, I would, I would be like, I love this storyline. Yeah. It's so interesting. It was <laughs> yeah. interesting. And your mom, I remember doing a scene with her, and she was like yelling at me. And I'm thinking, did I do something wrong? <laughs> Sometimes she'll be um, like, like, re like running her lines in yeah. in a different room, yeah. and I'm like. What did I do? Like and yeah. she's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm like rehearsing, and I was like, oh, I thought you were yelling at me. And I, it was, like, yeah. it was coming out of, but you know, it's, she's just fierce that as an actress. Yeah. And I, I, that's what I love. But another, another thing she's fierce at is how much she loves you. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I won't get into some personal stuff, but years ago there was some stuff going down and. I saw her in the in the middle of this stuff, just, and it was all because of, for you. Yeah. And I said, this woman just would, she would die 100%. for you. 100%. She would die for I, you. I feel so incredibly lucky to have had, you know, like, she's my best friend. Yeah. I know that oh, sounds so cheesy. No, but, no, but it's, yeah, I get yeah. it. Yeah. And... And, and besides even that, but even in terms of being supportive of, of you know, my, my music, um, if, if I had a parent that wasn't and there was like this, that's not a good decision, you should go into accounting or something like that, I probably, I don't know if I'd be doing music, you know? So, and I think it, it stems from her mom and dad, you know, telling her to pursue something that yeah. she loved and was good at. Yeah. You know? It's, it, you know, like I always say, and I talk about it quite a lot where if my parents didn't support me, especially where I was at in the small town in Martinez near San Francisco, I went through so much that I, there's no way I could have, I wouldn't, I wouldn't been able to do it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I may be, I don't know where I'd be. Yeah. And, and you need that because a lot of times, at least I didn't get that anywhere else. Mm-hmm. So you need it at least with the, yeah. your parents. Well, and even, I mean, with mental health and stuff too, you know, I feel very lucky that I had um, therapy and a diagnosis so young. And that's all because of her, because she noticed signs and she said, okay, let's ah. get this checked out. Whereas I have a lot of friends now that are just getting diagnosed because they... You said bipolar? Yeah. Well, bipolar is also interesting because that doesn't, at least for women, and I, I'm not a you know, I don't have a psych degree, but, um, it, it, it gets diagnosed later usually because the, the signs come later. Yeah. Cause I, but, I didn't know. I, I mean, I probably, there would have been signs, Yeah. but back when I was, uh, uh, got diagnosed, no one knew what the right. hell, even when I was running around with my head in the clouds, right. People didn't, didn't know what it was. Yeah. Um, but yeah, with OCD, usually signs like come when you're younger, but a lot of times people don't pick up on it and then they don't get diagnosed until later in life. But because I got diagnosed so early and I did clinical trials at UCLA, which I am so grateful for because they really just helped me so much. Um, but because I did that, I, you know, started working on myself, my mental health, but also just myself as a human being really young. And I learned coping mechanisms and I learned how to articulate my feelings. Um, and I think that I took those and, you know, it helped my, my disorder, but it also helped me just like become a well-rounded person. When did you first feel the, the OCD or? Um, I think I was diagnosed when I was eight. Eight? Yeah. Because so I would, you know, go. I would like tap things. And, no, yeah. Like, like what? Like well, you would... I would like feel like I needed to tap something a certain amount of times, or like touch things, or like spin around, or something like that, um, a certain amount of times, or else it didn't feel right, and I couldn't let it go, or something bad would happen, or yeah. So really, mm -hmm. like, say you would come here, sit down, and you'd have to hit this llama. Yeah. For eight yeah. times. Or I would have intrusive thoughts. Um, and, and then you'd have to like confess them or, um, or, or worries and guilt. And that's honestly stuff that's like, I don't do tapping stuff anymore that 
stopped a really long time ago, but I still have the intrusive anxiety thoughts and I have to recognize it as like, okay, this is my OCD, you know, relax. Um, but like a lot of worries and a lot of guilt. Uh, I know, that's yeah. trippy. That, I hate those thoughts. Well, and also it's difficult sometimes too because worrying and guilt are also just, you know, humans who where their chemicals are normal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they, have those, yeah. they have those feelings too. So sometimes I, I have to remind myself that, okay, I'm having, you know, more. Uh, you know, I'm having a and what do you an do? unusual amount. What do you do? Um, for me, one of the bad habits is seeking reassurance um, because at the end of the day, like, you can't always rely on other people to reassure you have to be able to help yourself. Yeah. But for me, um, I, I mean, journaling is good. I don't journal as much as I want to, um, but... They say that's the thing. Well, it's funny because it's kind of like a feedback loop for me because I'm like, okay, I know I should journal, but then I don't because my OCD, if I don't write every single thing down that uh, I'm thinking, like I get kind of stressed out. Um, but then if I don't journal, I feel guilty for not journaling. Right. And it's like, oh Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but... Um, I just don't do it because... It- I just don't think it does anything for me. I think it just depends on the person, you know? Yeah. I think I think for some people, journaling is good. I think for other people, just talking about it to someone, inventing. Right, right. Um, and just rambling works. But, yeah, for me, I, I think a, one of the biggest steps is just to recognize what it is and then to mm-hmm. forgive yourself. Mm-hmm. Because I think I just put a lot of pressure on myself when I have negative thoughts and intrusive thoughts. And then... I, you know, get kind of mad at myself. And then I think just one thing to, to cope with it is just to recognize it and just to, you know, take accountability and be like, okay, this is what this is. And now I'm going to let, I mean, one of the things I used to, they used to tell me in therapy was to picture a cloud and then just put it on a cloud and then just watch the cloud. I've heard of that. So a lot of like the visualization helps. um, Now... But have you had had it where it was so bad that the thoughts just took you over and you couldn't stop and you yeah. and you cry and you, you oh had... yeah when I was younger um, maybe like junior high or beginning of high school or something like that a huge trigger for me was homework um, too much homework too much homework not understanding the homework. Uh, and I don't really know why that was the trigger. I think it was just because there was a lot of pressure at school, which I always find interesting because my mom was not a helicopter parent. She was not someone that was like, you have to get straight A's. I did it to myself. Uh. I think it was because I went to a college prep school and my friends were smart and, you know, I was like, okay, I have to get straight A's. And I don't know where that really came from. It just came from within. Yeah. But, um. I had to get straight D's. (laughs) Yeah, I don't really, but it just was a huge trigger and it would just, and that's just when the OCD was at at its worst. It's hard, it's weird talking about because I honestly don't remember all the feelings. I have like a lot of journals and stuff, but, um, but yeah, I would, something would happen and I just, my brain would shut off. I wouldn't understand the material and then I would just like lose it and I would have a meltdown and, you know, yeah, it definitely got bad at times when I was, um. When you went off to school. Yeah. Did when you I, have anything going on there? Well, so I, I stopped going to therapy for a bit, like middle end of high school, because I, I just didn't really need it at the time. I was doing well. Um, but then end of high school, I actually went back and I, I called my mom. I was like, I need to go back to therapy because um, I was, it's so funny because second semester of your senior year usually should be like calm. You're, you're in school, you're you're done with things. But I, with music school, you don't hear back until April because of you you have to audition in the spring. Um, and I decided to do, um, the school musical and I had like one line, not because they, they don't do it based off of, they, they do it like who's been in the musical the longest. And I was, I didn't do the musicals because I was in a band. Um, so I had like one line. I have no problem with that. I love being in the ensemble, but it was one of those things where there was still a lot going on with academics. And I still felt like even though it's second semester, I still had to get straight A's. And um, and uh, 
I would start, I would start having panic attacks because we went, we'd have to go to rehearsal every single day until like late. And I, then I had homework and it was just a lot of, for my mind. Like I think for the average person it was fine, but for me I was just like, I can't handle this. And, and then in class I would get so frustrated when I didn't understand something and then I, you know, I started going to the, like, the, um, the bathroom and I would, like, start, like, self-harming. Really? And, yeah, and I don't mind talking about it because it's, honestly, I just think it's I just good to for people to know. About that, yeah. Um, so that other people... What who, is, what is the self-harm? Is it because... I think it's a control thing. take away thing. this pain to, to do whatever you could do? I think it's a control thing. I think it's a, I think it's a mixture of punishment and control. So, oh. you know, like if I don't, and it was so silly. And then immediate, immediately after you just feel like, why the hell did I do that? That was so stupid. Um, wow. But yeah, like I, I wouldn't understand something in algebra and I would be like, God damn it. Like, <laughs> and then I, I don't know. I don't know. And a lot of people, and then, and then the OCD would come into play and I'd be like, you're doing this for attention. You're doing this for attention. And I'm like, that's what you hear. Yeah, or because I, what this I used to call it as a kid was having a bully in your head. So, or oh. you're playing like tug of war with this bully. Um, but, but yeah, so I, that, that started happening. And because I had gone to so much therapy and I knew, you know, what was my OCD and what I needed to do and how to articulate my feelings. If I hadn't gone to therapy, I don't know if I would have necessarily told anyone, but because I had, I immediately called um, I don't think I called my mom. I think I called a friend of my mom because I didn't want to freak my mom out at first. But I called. I was like, okay, I need to go to therapy. Obviously, this is not good. Um, don't know what's going on. And when I went back to when I went to therapy, I she said something that was really interesting, which was, "You're going the the last time you had to go through this huge of a transition of like, you know, living at home to going to college. Even though I didn't go to college that far, but still, um, she said the last time you had to make that transition was." you know, when you were being born, when you were being pushed out of, you know, right. a body. So, you know, it's just a lot of, like, subconscious, you know, fear and yeah. stuff is changing and transitioning. Um, but, yeah, and a lot of – so the song Glass on the EP is about that. It's about, like, oh, self-harm yeah. and a really bad night I had. And, yeah, it's – I mean, it's weird talking about it because it's one of those things that, like – I, when I was releasing, and if the song's not subtle, you know what it's about, but when I released it, I was like, oh, I don't really know if I want everyone to know about my business, but then I was like, what, I had already had such interesting um, feedback from Untangling, which is about OCD, Yeah. and I had someone to say to me, because what I love about that song is that it doesn't necessarily have to be about mental health, it can be about any, right, right, any of your right, demons, right. and someone was told me that they're now son um was transitioning and that song is what made them you know eventually come out yeah and i was like oh my god like if my music can that's do right. that that's you right. know i need to just get over my own because i don't mind i don't mind i'm, I'm an open book yeah i i find i had a uh, somebody i knew i knew uh who did that and she was in big trouble. She was like 14 and I helped her out, you know, mm -hmm. throughout. And we're still friends and it's great. But I'm, I'm fascinated by it because it seems like everything that I've been through as far as, you know, everything. Um, that's something I never... Yeah. And I don't... I never thought I would either. Oh, I don't you know, didn't either? I don't know what happened. Like, I don't know... Ha I don't even know to this day what my brain was thinking and continued to think. It just would get so bad yeah. that I felt like, okay, I had do I've done the therapy. I've done all the coping mechanisms. I still feel like, you know, oh, I still feel bad. So maybe you, because you've done everything and nothing was really yeah. working, you might have thought that this could do something. Right. But, you know, looking back, it's like, okay, did I actually sit down and journal? Did I actually really think about it? You know, uh, like, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely could have done things and, you know, would have felt better. Yeah. But for this, it was it was an easy out. And it was, I think it wasn't a attention-seeking at all, but it, I think it was a cry for help. 
Yes. It was one of those things that was like, I am hurting. Someone help me. You know? Now, did it make you feel better in, in a second the, when you did it or it whatever? Felt, it felt better for probably three seconds. And then wow. it just felt shame and... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So... That's, but. that's, um, that's, but see, that's why you, you keep doing what you're doing, like I'm doing. Yeah. You, we need to. Yeah. Because you had, you know, you're great, but just this little moment right here is a very special moment. Yeah. Because in my mind, I'm going, and I'm not bullshitting, I'm saying, oh, wow, this is going to help a lot of girls. I hope so. And that's why I'm saying it. Because I, I don't really need people knowing that. <laughs> no. <laughs> just to know. <laughs> no. But, um, but it does help yeah. for you to just, like, I've been such an open book that I feel like people at this point are going, shut them up about bipolar, please. No, but, and also just at this point, I'm, I think, three <laughs> years clean. So it's, you know. Oh, uh, yeah, even yeah. Just yeah, that, you shouldn't you do it too past- early because... Then it can be a kind of you could you know, it's too much. But at three years, yeah, you're Yeah. And 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 also but but even just to say that like, okay, you can get past it. It's a hurdle, yes. you know, so you can come out the other end. Yes. Um, that's one thing I and I won't na- name any names, but that's one that's one thing <laughs> <laughs> that's one thing I don't like is to see people talking about mental illness and they still seem screwed up. Yeah. Cause then as a as a an audience you're going He's not helping him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why should I do that? Right. Uh, I think that's good. Let me tell you something. Uh, I want you to... Can you sing a song for me or something? Sure. Yeah, I want her to sing a song. But at first, I want to say to you um, that it was brave. Thank you. To... I didn't shut my phone off. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It was it was brave for you to to talk about the things you talked about. I'm so happy you did. Thank you. Because it, I know, and I know as a fact, it it will help so many young girls and I hope and so. even adults. I mean, yeah. I'm, um, because the more we speak, the more awareness. Yeah. And I think it's important. I think it's actually good for you. Um, but it's good for the world. Yeah. I also think that, you know, if someone is, like, listening to it. That's and right. They, and they can actually be like, okay, wait, someone else. That's That's right. how it felt. That's how it felt when that's I did right. it. You know, so, that's... like, even just to have, because when I talk to people with OCD, it's it's so interesting to be like, that's exactly how I felt. Yep. And it, it's, and then that's when you're like, oh, it is a chemical in your brain. It's these synapses that aren't closing. Because... It's it's something that I would never have thought someone else was also experiencing the exact, exact. same feeling. Yeah, I mean, yeah. when I was, uh, my first breakdown, you have to remember, 80 years ago, when I was 20, <laughs> yeah. I, I, no, I, I was alone with no social media. Now you can get in there and go on YouTube and, and research anything you want. Yeah. And if I had that... When I was rolling out of bed, you know, having th- terrible thoughts, I could have at least gone here and, and there's M- Maurice or Kate talking about something that I have. Yeah. And I didn't feel like such a an alien, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. Where it's like, okay, cool. Now we have that. Yeah. Let's use it. Well, I'm sure it's similar with bipolar disorder where, I mean, obviously there's bipolar 1 and bipolar 2, but even just for both of them, I'm sure there's such a spectrum of how people react. But, like, with OCD, people have such different types of OCD. Yeah, yeah. You know? So that's why it, it does sometimes get irritating when people are like, oh, I have OCD. I like to clean my room. I'm like, yeah. well, d- okay, do you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, don't think you do. But, exactly. But it is interesting because some people do have the hand-washing thing and they feel like they need to wash their hands or something bad will happen. For me, that's not... That's that's never been my thing. I've yeah. never needed things in a particular order to feel good. Um, it's always just come in different ways. Um, and everyone just has... Yeah. It's yeah. just different for people. And even people who go through manic episodes, yeah. they, they go through it differently. Yeah. Um, you know, like my my manic is manic, but my lows are low 
where some, I always bring this up, but like Kanye West, maybe his lows aren't that low because he don't take medication. Yeah, exactly. Because I've been on lithium for 30 years. It's saved my life. And I haven't had a breakdown in 30 years. Yeah. And I've done real well. So yeah. I haven't felt it. Effect, but I don't get side effects on any medication. It's weird. I mean, I... I went was I've been on Lexpro for. I'm on Lexpro. <laughs> really? Really? Yeah, I've been on Lexpro for years, but I was at like such a slow, you know, uh, dosage that I didn't even really like do anything. And then after the whole like self harm stuff, I um, th- my psychiatrist was like, "Why don't we like up?" Up. And I was always, I never wanted to go, I, I, know, I was, same I was way. really, because then I felt like I was moving backwards. Yes. I was like, God damn it, I want to be yes. better than this. Um, but then I realized, it's like, it's not a, it's not a weakness thing. It's chemicals. Yes. There's chemicals in your brain and it's, they're not firing correctly. Right. So let's just balance it out to give yourself an equal playing yes. ground. So for me, when I went up, when I upped my dosage, I, it, I like, I didn't have those urges anymore because, as he put it, he said it just quiets the noise. It just quiets That's the noise. That's right. You know? And you're good with Lexapro? Yeah. Lexapro also, literally eight months ago, saved my life. Because if Lexapro didn't work, I wouldn't have gone back to GH, I'll tell you that. Yeah. I, we, I will say that, you know, get professional help. Yeah, and, we're not, we're not yeah, psychiatrists. Because I don't want to, I, I get a lot of people who write me and say you know should i take this should i take that i just tell the, the truth and what i did and oh, I I sing the song okay so yeah this is the uh the first track on the ep um and it's called untangling it's about literally just the feelings that i felt during having ocd and stuff like that oh yeah. cool um okay <laughs> me caught in a silky web, tied up in knots, hands around my neck, wrapped up in a sticky mess, braided, faded, I'm possessed, need some relief, this is endless, it's endless, is there somebody out there who can save me? change me I'm a tangled a mess I'm alive but I'm dead I'm a shell of myself and I'm hanging by a thread I'm a tangling inside and there's nowhere to hide I'm helpless defenseless and I'm running Start looking in, staring at yourself The walls are looking thin, scratches from your nails No one even understands all these little huge demands There's cracks in the ceiling and it's caving in, it's caving in Is there somebody out there who can save me? Something out there that can change me I'm a tangled a mess I'm alive but I'm dead I'm a shell of myself and I'm hanging by a thread I'm a tangling inside And there's nowhere to hide I'm helpless, defenseless And I'm running I'm stuck in my head, can't scream my way out Spinning around, going down, 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 down Step after step, wanting just to be found That help myself, but I I'm a tangled of mess 
I'm alive, but I'm dead. I'm a shell of myself, and I'm hanging by a thread. I'm a today about OCD and just everything so um, she is Nancy Lee Grand's daughter but she's also Kate Grand her own talented person with a big heart thank you <laughs> I you appreciate are. it All right, great bye <laughs>